Hey everybody, in this tutorial we're going to talk about the basics of the UI in Character Creator 3. So if you're a beginner to Character Creator 3, uh, you don't really know the environment yet, this is a good tutorial to watch. We'll introduce you to the various uh, parts of the UI and how you can use them. All right. So first of all, let's talk about the main menu at the top, the file menu. Okay. So this is where we're going to start off. We have the regular items like file, edit, create, and stuff like this. I'm going to run through these really quickly. So under file, we have your typical things like, uh, you know, uh, new project, open project. Uh, you can go to your recent projects and stuff as well as uh, save your projects and export and all this stuff. Uh, under edit, you have the option to undo, uh, select, um, select all. You can move and rotate things as well on, on the uh, world and local axis, depending on what you have selected. Okay, and we can talk more about that in other tutorials, as well as preference and project settings are down here as well. In create, you're going to have basically the ability to create anything. Um, you can import in, you can create with FBX keys uh, certain items like cloth and accessories. You can create morph sliders, so you can uh, create your own custom morph sliders. Um, accessories, there's also lights uh, and shadow casters as well, so you can do uh, some different shadow casting. And then uh, transformer, okay, so this is basically importing in a character from Daz if you have a character creator pipeline. Okay, so, and then to modify, we have uh, modify, we can smooth the mesh um, in various ways. If we have something selected, like if I select the character herself here, just click on her face, I can go to uh, smooth mesh, and you can see those become all uh, enabled. We can open the eyes, the mouth. Um, modify is just basically the various ways that you can modify your character. You can uh, do, uh, you can remesh the character to optimize the character's mesh. You can edit the pose, edit the face expression and everything. Um, and you can also adjust contact points for the hands and feet. Big more sliders, all kinds of fun stuff in there. It's a really long uh, list of stuff to do, so we don't have time to explain it in this tutorial. Uh, but let's move on to render. So render is where we basically render your image. You can also use the preview or pr uh, press F10 to get a uh, preview image of what your render is going to look like. And you can see per pretty, uh, you know, uh, pretty basic stuff right there. Uh, in view, uh, you have different ways to uh, move your camera. So you can just select the pan tool. You can also use the X hotkey, and that'll pan around like this. Uh, you can use the Z hotkey or click on zoom. You can zoom in and out of your character like this. Or you can also choose the C hotkey or orbit uh, to do this. Okay. Generally, what I like to do is I like to uh, click on the select. And then you can just use alt and your left mouse button to move like this. To pan, you can use alt and your right mouse button to uh, orbit. And you can just scroll your mouse wheel to zoom in and out. Okay, that's much easier. Um, aside from view, we have the different camera views you can set as well. Uh, we'll not, we'll not go into that right now. Um, submission tools. These are submission tools. For example, if you create your own custom sliders and you want to, uh, uh sell them on the marketplace or something, you can do that here as well. Uh, you can validate DRM once you've purchased it and all sorts of other stuff. Uh, under window, this is a little bit, uh, we'll, we'll go into this a little bit. Window, you can choose preset workspaces. So right now we have, uh, standard. You can also use the control two hotkey. Advanced will give you a bit, a bit of a bigger resolution here, and you can see the windows change a little bit as well. I can also go to, uh, you know, low res. Okay, so much lower resolution just like this. So those are the basic uh, workspaces. I normally stick with standard. And there is also the ability to reset the layout and everything like that. We'll talk about that in just, moment, just a moment here. Uh, the toolbar, you can see the toolbar, we have everything selected. And the toolbar is this area right here below the file menu. So these this contains a whole bunch of different... Um, uh, tools that are used to like optimize your workflow for easy access here. You can click and drag them around. Like for example, I can click and drag this here and all the other ones will move over. I can click and drag it over here and uh, take, take away some of the iRay render stuff. If I click this, then I can, you know, see them all like that. Okay. I reveal them and you can just basically place these things wherever you want. You can place them uh, down here as well. I can, you know, place them on their own little row of the, uh, of the, uh, toolbar there you can just you know throw stuff wherever you want and if you get really messed up and you're just like oh crap i want to go back to normal then you can go to window and workspace and reset layout okay and it'll reset it back to the default which is this one right here you can also save your custom ui if you want you can go up to window uh workspace here you can save the layout if you like that messy messy layout that i had you can go ahead and save it and then you can it'll appear right here and you can uh, um, click it and uh, select it whenever you want Okay, if you don't want certain things to appear on your toolbar, you can just deselect them from here. So if we wanted to uh, take away, for example, the, uh, let's take away the project, which is these ones up here. Uh, just click that, and they'll be gone. Be gone, project toolbar. And we can go down here to the modify tools, take those out. 
uh, window toolbar and a camera, which will be these ones behind right here. Take those out. And of course, you can just go ahead and restore them by reselecting them um, as much as you want. Okay. And then beside that, we have plugins. Right now, I only have the iRay Render plugin. We'll talk about that in other tutorials. And the help files. Okay. Tons of tutorials, video tutorials online, just like this one. Okay. You can also go to the online manual. Um, all sorts of stuff here that you can uh, take a look at. A uh, very educational section is the help section. Now let's take a look at the content manager. So the content manager is essentially where all of your content is, whether it be characters, morphs, accessories, clothing, all that stuff is, in, is contained within the content manager here. And you can see there are a number of different categories in the content manager. We have project, we have base, skin, cloth, accessories, pose, and stage elements, okay? So these are our main categories. And you can see when we click on each of them up here, um, the uh, area here will be populated with different items, okay? So this one's accessories here. You can see accessories for different areas of your body. You can set your character into different poses and also add additional stage elements like uh, various lighting scenarios and stuff like that. Below each one of those is, uh, you know, the subsection. So full body morphs. Under, under uh, base, we have full body morphs. We have body, head, hair. So this is all, your, all the physical traits of your character, basically, under your base. That's your base character. Here we have different uh, values for the skin. We can do skin and also special, which is like the makeup and stuff. Um, and uh, we'll just go to clothing here because clothing has the most uh, content. There's underwear, uh, stuff like shirts, uh, pants, and you can go through all these categories and see all the various things. Um, for example, if we went to, uh, let's just go back to our main category here, cloth template. If we just go back here, we can also search for things as well. So if you want to search for things, what we can do is just type in the search field here and let's type in like jeans, for example. Okay. And just press enter and that's going to search all the categories for jeans. Okay. Since we're at the very base category here, cloth template, and it'll find all the things called jeans in all of our subcategories here. Okay. If we go here uh, to skirts and we typed in jeans, we're not going to find anything because we're in the skirts category. Okay. So you can go to all these categories and uh, under skirts, let's go to uh, skirts, for example, then essential clothing. And you'll see the directory structure will appear right here. And you can navigate between all of these levels just like that, or by clicking on uh, these various levels here and going to, uh, you know, further into the rabbit hole, right, of uh, clothing. And if you want to add something to a custom library, there's also the custom tab here. You can see we're at the template tab right now. We can go to the custom tab and say, for example, I just go back to our main category here. Uh, I'm going to select my character's jacket. Say this is a jacket that I imported in or a jacket that I customized with colors and materials and I want to save it for later use. What I can do is I can just select the jacket and press the plus key down here. Okay. And it's going to add that jacket to my main, uh, main category right here. Generally what you'd want to do, you can just type in jacket. Generally what you'd want to do is you want to take that into the, uh, category, the respective category, in this case coats. So under the custom tab, go into coats and then add it here. Okay. So press plus again, and we'll just call it like leather jacket. All right. And if you want to find the file, you can simply right click that file and go to find file as well. And then you can select it and you can delete it if you want. Okay. So if I delete it from my explore window, it's going to be gone from my con uh, content manager as well. Okay. Let's just close that down for now and go back into our templates. Let's talk a little bit now about applying stuff to your character. So very easy, uh, straightforward stuff. In this case, we're going to go ahead and choose accessories. I'm going to apply a couple accessories to my character. And under the head section here, we have a number of different folders. Uh, these are content packs that you can purchase from the content store. Uh, for example, we have this hottest hairstyles one. Okay. And there's some weird looking glasses. We can just simply double click those glasses and they will apply to our character. Okay. And if we want, once they're selected, we can just press delete and delete them. Okay. Let's go to a different folder here under head. Let's go to party fun. Uh, let's go down to a different pair of glasses here. We can give her a mustache if we want. Um, so if I select these hipster glasses, for example, I can actually click and drag these glasses onto my character. You'll see the yellow selection box, and I can just click and drag them onto my character, and they will apply. And then I can uh, press delete and delete those again. And then we also have these round glasses. Another way to apply them to your character, make sure your character is selected. And then there's a little down arrow up here, which means apply. Okay, we'll apply those glasses to our character and they'll apply right to our character's face there. Okay, so we can just go ahead and delete those. And let's throw on those hipster glasses. I kind of like those. Normally what I do is I just double click it and it'll apply to the relevant area of your character. So those are the methods for applying items to your character. 
Uh, and that's in the content manager here. You can see we have the visual tab and the scene manager, which we'll talk about in just a moment. But before we do that, let's go over here to the modify tab. Okay. So the modify panel, sorry. So the modify panel has a number of different tabs. You can see we have the attributes tab, which is uh, a lot of attributes in here. And we can go into detail on more on those in our getting started tutorial. Uh, we also have the motion. Uh, so poses, you can pose your character, edit the facial expressions. This one is for morphs. Okay, so if you want to uh, adjust your character's morph, for example, let's take a look at adjusting the head on our character. Maybe we'll go to the full head category and we can maybe make her head thinner by clicking and dragging this slider. Okay, you can see the head gets thinner just like that. There's also more detailed ones that contain like, uh, you know, for example, this one right here, we can make the face look younger by clicking and dragging this young slider. Okay, you can also enter in values. Uh, you can also click and drag this, by the way, to make sure you can see the values. If we enter in a value of like 200 for young, okay, she'll get really kind of uh, has have a really real baby face right there, okay. So you're not limited to, to uh, zero or negative 100 and 100. You can also enter in other values as well. So like negative 50, for example, she'll look a bit older and and uh, more ragged. And you can also double click any of the parameters. If I double click this face young, it'll reset it back to the default value, okay. All sorts of fun stuff you can mess around with in the morphs tab. Uh, next is appearance. Okay, so this is where you can modify the uh, the, the textures, the uh, substances of your character in certain cases. Okay, uh, uh, character creator one characters, uh, CC1 bases can do this, uh, CC3 not as of yet. And there's also materials. So these are the basically you can modify all the materials. Select uh, if you double click my uh, jacket, for example, here, you can see the jacket stuff will appear, all the jacket materials. I can double click on the uh, glasses there, and all the glasses stuff will appear. Okay, so pretty uh, pretty straightforward, all right? That's really all there is to the modify panel. This is where you modify everything on your character, where you can customize the materials, the morphs, and all that other fun stuff. And certain sections of the modify panel, like the attributes, for example, will have all sorts of different sections, like avatar, like this, modify, transform. You can, you can click on these uh, headers and just uh, minimize them like this, or I can use the hotkey. If I press the T hotkey, it'll uh, toggle transform, just like this, okay? All right, and uh, the same goes for all the other categories as well here. Motion only has one, uh, Morph only has one, but the, the um, uh, materials list will have, you can minimize all these just like this as well, okay? And some of them have hotkeys you can assign, like Control T will open up the tessellation, and Y will open up the texture settings, and so on and so forth. Okay, from the modify panel, let's go over to the scene manager. Okay, so scene manager is normally hidden here under this tab. So you can see you can select all the items on your character just like this by um, clicking on the items in the scene manager here. This is a very easy way to select items. Um, if I want, I can just lock certain items. Uh, let's take a look at our character's chest, for example, here. If I right click on the chest, you can see we have the, uh, the noodle strap and the, uh, which is the top she's wearing and the base underneath. If I right click over here, we have the option for all three of them. We have the leather jacket we can select, the uh, top, as well as the base, which is the character's skin, okay? So if I select the uh, noodle top, you can see just like that. We can also go ahead and hide different items if we want. So if I select, right click and select the punk leather jacket here, we can hide them by clicking the uh, little uh, eye button here, eye icon in the scene manager, okay? And you can see that because uh, we have uh, the mesh hiding on, She's not going to have uh, any skin below the leather jacket just to optimize the character's mesh. Okay, you can also lock them. So if you don't want certain items selected, so say for example, I click and drag like this, I'm gonna select the hipster glasses and the base. Now, if I don't want these hipster glasses to be selected when I click and drag, I can just go ahead and use this lock uh, function here. Well, it's unlocked right now, I just lock it, select something else, and then if I try and click on it, nothing will happen. Okay, I can try and click from every direction, it's not going to select those glasses. It's only going to select the character base, okay? So if you don't want something to be selected, you can just lock it or unlock it. And there's also different uh, views as well. You can choose normal, uh, like wireframe. Uh, wireframe on shaded is a, is a good uh, um, view normally to kind of see the, uh, the material of your, of your uh, object as well as the wireframe. So wireframe on shaded would probably work better on the leather jacket here. There you go. Okay, and regular wireframe is just like this, all right? So totally transparent. All right, let's just go to the normal mode right now. And there's also shadows and uh, and uh, tessellation here as well. We'll not talk about that right now. 
And finally, let's go over to the visual panel here. Okay, so the visual panel contains a number of different tabs. We have the uh, atmosphere tab right here, the shadows one beside it, the shadow maps. Uh, beside that are effects. We're not going to worry about this right now. And beside that, we have global illumination. Okay, so you can turn global illumination on or off. Be aware that activating global illumination will actually uh, slow down your processing speed a little bit. So I generally only use that when I'm just kind of trying to optimize lighting at the end of my uh, end of my modifications. Okay, but let's take a little quick look at atmosphere here. So in atmosphere, we have an HDR effect currently in play. If we take that off, not really much of an effect. You can see her button there is kind of, uh, there's a little bit of a glow around the button there. If we increase the bloom scale, you can see how we can uh, adjust that. But we can turn the HDR effect on or off. And there's tone map and all sorts of other stuff that we can mess around with as well if we'd like. But we'll not go into detail on that right now. Um, beside the HDR effect, there is also IVL, which is image-based lighting. If we deselect that, our scenes are going to go completely dark, except for the one light in the scene. If we go to our scene manager here, we have this spotlight right here, okay? We can deactivate this, and then everything will go completely dark, all right? So those are the main lights in the scene. Back to the visual tab here, we'll activate our IBL. So this is the atmospheric lighting. We can increase or decrease the level of IBL, and you can see the HDR effect right there as well. And below that, there's also the option to uh, show the sky. If you want to show the sky, you can just make it invisible and it becomes a plain gray background. Okay, pretty simple stuff. And that's about it for the atmosphere tab. Over to the shadows now, you can take shadows on or off. Okay, you can see the shadows kind of on our character, like on the jacket, on our chest there. We can take those shadows off just like this. We can decrease the shadow strength, kind of fade them out. Lots of other stuff you can do. Uh, global darkness multiplier, you can uh, adjust the... Uh, level of darkness of this of global shadows there. Uh, you can also adjust the resolution and everything like that. Um, let's go quickly into effects here. We won't worry too much about the uh, post effects right now. Uh, let's go quickly over to global illumination. Activating global illumination in this case isn't going to do a whole lot because we don't have kind of walls or anything to, for our lighting to reflect off of. Okay, uh, but just so you're aware of that, we have a separate tutorial on global illumination. All right, so I think that's the basics of the UI. Relative to a lot of other programs in the CGI industry, this is a fairly uh, simple uh, UI, fairly simple layout. So uh, hopefully it wasn't too difficult um, and uh, you'll, you'll get used to it pretty fast. I think the learning curve is pretty simple for Character Creator 3. Um, so if you have any other questions, make sure you check out our forums over at forum.reillusion.com. We also have lots of other tutorials in our learning center on the Reillusion website. So thanks so much for watching, everyone, and I hope to see you in the next video.